Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to User Education. We continue this part of the Physics for Genes course, which is called Electromagnetism. Before we were talking about electricity, this is the first lecture which we'll be talking about magnetism. And then, when both of them will be finished, we will talk about why we are combining this into one electromagnetism part of the course. Now, um, so the name of the whole course is Physics 14. It's presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, from the unizor.com, because um, every lecture has very detailed notes. It's like a textbook. Uh, there are many problems which you can just solve yourself and then check the answers, if you are correct, for self-checking. There are exams and uh, the site is completely free. There are no ads, no no strings attached. You don't even have to log in if you don't want to. Okay, so let's talk about magnetism. Well, first of all, recall that we had two very, very different kinds of forces. One kind of force is the contact. That's where, the, where we were studying this in mechanics. If I'm pushing something, that's kind of obvious what is the source of, of the force and what's the result of this, some kind of a movement. Another kind of forces were the forces which act on a distance. Now, so far we were talking about gravitational forces. They do act on a distance and uh, electrostatic forces also act on the distance. There are similarities and there are differences between these forces. For example, gravitation, gravity always exists. So whenever you have any material object, there is some gravity. And gravitation always attracts two different objects. In case of electrostatic, uh, well, first of all, it, the forces, electrostatic forces, exist only if you have uh, charged objects. Charged means either they have uh, an axis of electrons, it's negative charge, or deficiency of electrons, that's the positive charge. So some objects do have these electrostatic forces between them, some don't, which is different from gravitation. Also, in case of gravitation, it's always attracting. In case of electrostatic, it can be either attractive, if you have positive and negative, or it can be repelling, which you have two negatives or two positives. So, there are some differences, there are some similarities. Now, in both cases, we have introduced a concept of a field just to explain, basically, what does it mean to act on a distance. So, we're talking about that there is some kind of a field. We didn't go into more detail about what exactly the field is. It's field something which basically delivers the force. That's, that's kind of an explanation. Um, uh, so the concept of field was introduced just to explain this um, acting on a distance. Now, um, in this particular area we have just one other kind of forces um, which act on a distance. So not only gravitational, not only electrostatic, we also have another kind of forces and that's exactly what magnetism is about. There are certain um, objects which have permanent property, permanent like uh, in case of a gravity, but in case of gravity all objects have, which have mass, they have gravitation around them, gravitation field. In this case, only some objects. Some objects have, some objects don't have. Now, um, the, uh, there are naturally occurring objects, and we can also make artificial objects of that kind. So, they have this property of magnetism, which is different from, from gravitation, different from electrostatic, um, but nevertheless, it acts in a similar fashion. So if you have, for instance, two 
uh, objects of this kind, and we will call them magnets. Um, they can either attract if you just put them together properly, or they can actually repel if you change the direction. So it all depends on how you um, uh, direct these objects towards each other. That, that's one of the differences. Well, um, and there are some other less important differences. What is important is that this is not related to any kind of our activity. You see, electrostatic forces must be related to some activity first. We should separate electrons from the atoms, so wherever we go with electrons becomes negative, and whatever is left, atoms without certain electrons, become positive. So we need to do something to produce electricity. In case of the permanent magnets, we don't do anything. They just exist. It's like gravitation, basically. It just exists. So these objects, and by the way, sometimes they're called ferromagnetic. Ferro from the iron, from ferro, ferrum, that, that's Latin. And uh, it, it's because all these objects are somehow related from the chemical composition to iron, or similar to iron, like nickel, for instance. So um, these ferromagnetic objects, they are permanent, so we don't have to do anything to make it work, to make the magnetic field around uh, these objects to exist. So that's one thing. They are natural and permanent. That's why it's called permanent magnets. But again, we can artificially create, chemically create these kind of objects, but they are they occur in, in the nature. So, um, what is very important is the following. And again, that's kind of a differentiating this field, the magnetic field around these objects from, let's say, electrostatic field. In case of electrostatic field, it's either negative or positive. You don't really have in the same object both. I mean, maybe temporarily you can separate them, but if, if you don't separate it further, then negative and positive will go back to each other and they will neutralize each other. In case of magnet, that does not happen. It, in case of magnets, one part of this magnet is always have certain uh, magnetic properties of one kind and another part is from another part, another another kind of magnetic properties. And conditionally, again, in as much as in electrostatic we call conditionally minus and plus, negative and positive, in case of magnets, for the same object, one part uh, is called north pole and another is called south pole. And again, every magnet has two poles, which is different from electrostatic, charged object when it's either negative the whole object is either negative or positive here the same object has two poles and as far as attraction and repelling is if you have okay this is my north pole and this is my north pole and these are south poles at the bottom so in case of magnets permanent magnets similar poles are repelling and uh, different poles, like north to south or, or south to north, they are attracting each other. So, again, there is some similarity and there are some differences. What's important with permanent magnets is that the north and south poles exist on each object. Why? It's a different question. But that's what differs from, let's say, electrostatic forces. Now, um, Okay, now what's um, very important is that um, our planet Earth is a giant magnet. It has also North Pole and South Pole. Well, interestingly enough, North Pole is very close to our geographical North Pole and South Pole is very close to our geographical South Pole in the planet Earth. What's also interesting is that location of the North Pole and South Pole is not really completely permanent because Earth has 
lots of things which, which are going on inside it. It's volcanoes, you know, all these lava things, etc. And Earth's core is always kind of moving. We live on a very thin crust above melted lava, basically. Um, so whenever it's moving, uh, since everything is moving inside and there are all kinds of minerals, metals, etc. Um, melted together, the location of the North Pole and South Pole is fluctuating. Um, not a lot, but sufficient amount of you know distance, it's moving sufficient amount of distance to notice. So, um, we are using compass, you know, to point to north or to south, whatever. And um, uh, I, I would like to, to say that if you are relati relatively far from the poles, somewhere, you know, in between uh, certain middle parallels, um, then direction of the compass to the north is relatively precise. But if you are Here's our Earth. Okay, this is the axis. So this is our geographical north, and somewhere here is magnetic uh, north. So if you are somewhere here, in the middle parallel somewhere, then the, uh, the direction to the north pole, magnetic pole, is really very close to geographic pole. But if you are near there, you can have it in an opposite direction completely. So your North Pole will be one um, direction and the uh, magnetic North Pole will be a completely different direction. So you have to be very careful to use the compass uh, around the North Pole or South Pole. And again, the magnetic North Pole and South Pole are also fluctuating, so you don't really know what's happening at that particular moment of time. So it's not, not easy. Um, now, so how the compass is working? Well, very easy. Compass has this kind of rotating arrow. One of them is red, another is blue, usually. Now, red is, and it's the same actually for all magnets, when they are artificially created or um, they are just from nature, but you, you're basically, you know, buying it in the store. They are usually painted. Half of them is painted red, and half of them is painted blue. Blue is north, red is south. So what's happening? Red is south, and it points to north pole of the Earth. North and south attract each other. So that's why if this arrow is this way, and the north. Uh, magnetic pole is over there, then it gradually um, directs to, to towards the north. So that's how the compass is working. And again, it, it, we have to really be very careful to use it near the north pole or south pole, because then everything is completely different. Um, okay, so that's basic properties of magnetic, of, of permanent magnets. Um, number one, they're permanent. We don't really have to do anything to make these magnetic forces to, to, to actually appear, to act. They are permanent. Secondly, we have two poles, north and south, conditionally called obviously north and south. Um, uh, and north attracts to south, uh, but repels north. South attracts to north and repels south. So in some way there is some similarity with uh, uh, electrostatic fields. Uh, there are some similarities, like permanence, with gravitational field. Um, and again, the difference is that they exist just by themselves. You don't have to do anything to, to separate electrons, etc., like in an electrostatic field. Like gravitation, is, it exists, basically. We don't know why, to tell you the truth, but it exists. Same thing with permanent magnets. Now, um, it would be probably interesting, well, at least I consider it's very interesting, to find out why 
the whole concept of field acting and the distance, etc. Why it, it, it works this way. And it's not easy, quite frankly. I mean, there are many theories, for instance, um, about why gravity exists. Um, in case of electrostatic field, we are attempting understand um, to understand the concept, the mechanism, by basically um, talking about electrons. Excess of electrons means negative. Deficiency of electrons means positive. But does it really explain this thing? No, because it's based on the fact that electron to electron repel each other, but electron to proton, let's say, attract each other. Why? It's not easy. Again, there are many very interesting and very complex theories about certain um, more elementary particles being exchanged between, let's say, two electrons. Like, imagine two electrons as two people and there is a some kind of a bowling ball which one of them is uh, throwing to another. So when the bowling ball is thrown then there is a recoil on one side and when the, po and the ball is um, uh, uh, received on another side it's also by inertia uh, goes away from the first person, right? So they're really kind of repelling each other. So if they are exchanging balls they are repelling each other. Well, it's an explanation. What are these balls? It's more elementary particles than electrons. So if electrons are, are people, then these balls which they're um, uh, exchanging is probably something really much, much smaller than electrons, uh, photons, for instance. So there are certain explanations, there are certain theories, there is a quantum uh, field theory, which basically spends a lot of time to explain certain things, but it's really very, very difficult. And um, same thing with magnetic uh, field. There is certain kind of explanation which physicists are considering to be, well, relatively close to truth and uh, corresponding to their experiment. And it's actually related to electrons. And here is very, I would say, superficial explanation of this. Um, so imagine an electron. Now the electron is not just, you know, particle which, like a small ball or something like this. It, it rotates around the, uh, the nucleus of the, of the atom and it also rotates around its own um, axis, or at least we can hypothesize that it, it rotates, which means it has certain spin. Now, as electron is spinning, it's producing a certain magnetic field. And this is, by the way, one of the foundation of the fact that we are talking about electromagnetism. Electricity and magnetism are related electricity is related to electrons, magnetism is related to the movement of electrons. So as the electrons spins, uh, the, I if you have even number of electrons on the outer orbit around the atom, they have different spins. Half of them have one spin, half of them have another spin. They are rotating in one. You can imagine as rotating in one direction and another rotating in another direction. And that produces um, uh, the magnetic field. But since they are spinning in different direction, the magnetic field is uh, basically nullifying each other. All these magnetic fields are nullifying. North goes to south, south goes to north, north goes to south, south goes to north, and everything is basically neutral, magnetically neutral. But if you have an odd number of electrons on the outer orbit of the atoms, and obviously, you know, half of the uh, elements have odd number, I guess, or almost half, then we have a disbalance. Then this one extra electron doesn't have a pair, 
So its magnetic field doesn't really uh, neutralize by another electron, which has a different spin. So that's one of the reasons why this particular atom can have certain magnetic properties. But this is one single atom. If atoms are positioned in such a way that direction of the magnetic uh, field of each atom is the same, then all these magnetic fields of every atom are combined together and that produce north and south pole on the entire object. So we need two conditions to have this permanent magnet. One condition is the material it's made of is supposed to have an odd number of electrons on the outer orbit and also the atoms shouldn't really be completely randomly positioned inside the object they should be like a like a in the crystal for instance for instance okay so there is certain direction all atoms are um, kind of directing their orbits so if you have all the orbits in one plane so all these planes should be parallel to each other and positioned always in one direction well to tell you the truth I'm not satisfied with this explanation completely but it's something it's something which also makes a very important connection between electricity and magnetism electrons here and there existence of electrons is for pure electrostatic, but their movement, their spinning, or whatever you call it, is the source of magnetic field. That's why, in theory, it's a one field called electromagnetic field, and that's what we will basically study a little bit later. Right now, this part is for magnets only and their properties. Okay, that's it for today. I suggest you to go to the website and read all these explanations there are not too many things which I draw on the board um, it's mostly the text which is uh, in the notes for this lecture which I would like you to read it basically inculcates the whole concept of the field uh, and how different fields gravitation electrostatic magnetic field how they are related as far as their properties are some of them permanent some of them require certain efforts some of them unidirectional, only attracting, some of them bidirectional, and basically existence of different kind of properties. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.